This program is brought to you by Great Basin College and is sponsored by Barrick Gold North America. Welcome to the oral history recording of the Great Basin Indian Archives. We are interviewing elders of the Great Basin. This recording is available to students and researchers at Great Basin College in Elko, Nevada, as well as on the Great Basin Indian Archives website at www.gbcnv.edu forward slash gbia. Helen Walker, near Duckwater, and I there. Has your family always been here in Duckwater? Ah, no, 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 no so we started in the yeah, nothing now also. Mari Mari Guchan Mana Dubia Dubia do like Mari dividing hun. We started in Guchan Hyan Sube. Guchu Guchun out so with Anamunda Kanagi we can wipe and said in the garden hang and uh you know, do was sang Hanna. So the I said in the way I back when so then they dive dive another with an up and flow you flow you or so can be an up and beer be a side dive and beer be a so on said it was a cry to be a honey do as we saw the new one as soon as we did punch a can out to us but on a man out of never shook each other as now no no side of my own power to get all so no sick in our be the punishing six number the beer was away the moon no more number one number what now Pai saya ni pun new part, baik tiba sih kan nak pun sebenda, ni munda sebenda ni mewan dan dan ini asis ni oldest one sebenda ni ni brother ya, what ni brother kan sebenda ni semua orang nama cikan tu, ni munda pun, wah wah mak mak wah ni hua what tapi ni cukup, ni asis sebenda ni nama dia. No water, we make up. Okay, now my 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 rival, I will hint it. No, get your table, I go no hill. Well, like I said, uh, my my family, they're not around here. It's just two of us left from from us. It was just I'm the oldest one out of the last group, and then my sister, she's the youngest. The rest, the oldest one, they're all passed on. So their kids is. Some are in Reno, some in California. They're just scattered all over. Like my kids, they, they, they just they work. They work in their tribe buildings, you know, in their tribe, um, their tribe, uh, working for their tribes. My son, he works down here at the oil rig, a refinery, and two of my girls works here at the tribal building at the clinic. One at the tribal building. And then I got uh, my sister, that youngest one. She's in um, uh, up in uh, oh my God, here Missouri, Missouri, Montana. I think it's in Montana. She's up there. And then my other daughter's in Vegas. She works with a lawyer down there. Then I got a lot of aunties and, you know, uncles, but they're not around here. They're just scattered all over. I went to school here, all my eighth graders, up to eighth graders. I think it was Indian school, because we, we had all kinds of teachers. You know, they hire a teacher, then they stay with us for a while, then they take off, and we have another one. You know, it, was, it wasn't a study teacher like the county had. The county had a teacher that lives down here, so that's that uh, Kathy was talking about. But this is these guys are from all over. From you know, they come teach us, but seemed like they were all, they were okay with us, so we never had no problem. Then we had a cook that used to cook for us. We at lunch time. She's um, uh, 
you probably know Virginia Sanchez and Lily, Lily Sanchez. Yeah, she was our cook, Lily Sanchez. She was our cook for a long time. Yeah, we speak Shoshone. We speak Shoshone. They never, we never had no problem with the, uh, well, then, that years, I think all the kids, eat, uh, they talk uh, Shoshone. Not really, uh, not much speaks English. But now, now the kids, they all speak English. Not much Shoshones. See, my kids all, they all, uh, they'll understand it, but they just don't talk. That's, I know that's my fault. I should teach them when I, when I, when they were small. Because we, we lived on a ranch down in uh, Moapa for, for 10 years when they were smaller. Then they went to school with the Zipans and Daibos. Like I say, it's my fault. I know I blame myself on that part. But they'll, they'll understand if you're talking to them. I talk Indian to them all the time. Then they, they'll understand me. But my grandkids are this uh, different story. When I try to talk to them in my language, they'll just mock you. They don't know what I'm talking about. Then I try to explain it to them. But still, they don't. Stuart boarding school, I didn't really care for it. Because, you know, there were uh, different tribes and some they don't treat you right. And, you know, they're kind of mean to us. And, but, uh, but that's where I learned how to do things with the teacher. One of the teachers, one of the dorm lady, she used to, she used to uh, let me clean her um, apartment. You know, she had apartments. So I used to clean that all the time, you know, maybe twice a week, three times a week or something like that. That's where I start learning how to clean house and stuff like that. In uh, used to iron her clothes, like her top and stuff like that. I iron for her all the time. I think that's where I learned how to iron and clean house and stuff like that. I still iron. I know a lot of people don't iron nowadays, but I still do. I think that's where I learned a lot of those stuff from Stuart. Then on that one summer we were shipped to uh, uh, up Lake up Lake Tahoe. They got a big uh, big uh, wash house or something up there, laundry mat, like laundry mat. There's a bunch of us girls got shipped up there for the summer, so that's where we uh, worked all summer at the laundry mat. Then school start, then we come back. Then I went to school up there for a few few months and then I took off. So that was the end of my steward. <laughs> 25 cents an hour. 25 cents an hour? Yeah, 25 cents an hour I used to get. That's a lot of money. Yeah, that's how much I was getting, 25 cents an hour. That's not my charm. <laughs> then I remember I worked for, um, uh, when I came back and about maybe what, three, four years later on, I found, I got, a, somebody got me a job in Tonopah at a laundry mat, and that was 75 cents an hour. So it was going up a little bit. Then I worked there for a little while, and then I came home, just trying it out, see how, how I would like staying by myself, but I didn't care for it. So I came home. So I've been working here and there around here. I worked in a, a drove bus for a while. Six years I was a bus driver. And then I um, worked at Current over there. They had a cafe and stuff like that. I worked there on weekends. <laughs> then later on I started working for the seniors over here. I worked a long time for the seniors till I retired. I was their cook job. Teresa, didn't she tell you that? Teresa, Sam? Yes. Me and her, we cooked for the seniors. We, we both, we both retired about the same year. We said, well, you know what? We should never retired. We should have just stood there, because every uh, ever since we got retired, we kind of both went on, you know, went down, getting sick and everything. See, I end up with knee surgery and. And her her leg, I think, is hurting or not or something else is hurting now. That's what we say now. We should never 
we should never quit. But we enjoyed that. We used to take our seniors to uh, Powwows, Elko, Battle Mountain. We even uh, went pinus picking in horse on one year. Then where else did we go with our seniors? Or to go shoot? But mostly it's Ely, Ely Powwow and stuff like that. We enjoyed that. We, you know, we used to go with them. But now all the seniors that we cooked with, they're all gone. Yeah, we had a ranch. Dad had a ranch. He was one of them, had ranch. We started from way up there, where in the res up there. That was our first ranch we had. We, he had some cows and he raised some hay. And then mom and us, we uh, had to help her with the garden. She had a big garden. We'd plant our own potatoes and stuff like that. like. Potato, carrots, all that stuff you could uh, store in a uh, cellar. She, she, what she do is she'll make a hole in there, make a little hole in there, and she'll put all her carrots one side and beets on side and potato on the open side, and then there she'll cover the rest of them up, have it for all winter long. But now you don't see that. Nobody do that. Nobody raised garden here. So how many people live here on the Duckwater? Reserve. Maybe pretty close to 200 with the kids, because we got a lot of little kids here. It's not a big reservation. Well, you could see it, just down the valley, mostly down here. This is where mostly uh, lives. Well, the guys are the ranchers. Yeah, the guys are ranchers, and then uh, I think there's three of them that, uh, let's see, there's Eddie, Tony, those guys got the ranch. They they work here at the tribal building, you know, at the shop. And most of them, they work, uh, some works in Ely at the mine, and then uh, there's a few of them works at uh, oil rig. My son works there and my grandson works down there. Well, they started over here at the tribal building, but then they had problem and they quit. Mostly the ladies, you know, they work at the school and they work at the tribal building. The guys there, the janitors over there, they got a job as a janitor. Then the ladies, they work in the office and stuff like that. Now, once in a while, me and my son and my other daughter, we go up to Elko, do our big shopping at the Walmart. Like, you know, like some big stuff up there. In Ely, it's just a boy, it's really high. So what we need, really need, you have to buy, but everything is so high. But we're kind of noticing in Elko, the meat are getting really high up there. Because we used to buy a lot of meat up there. But this last time we went up there, God, that's so high. So I guess they're going up too. Once in a great while, we'll go to Vegas and we'll buy the big stuff, like at the Costco. Big stuff, like meat and stuff, we we'll just pack them up, bring them home, and then we cut them up in small pieces and freeze them. That's what we do sometimes. What we need really bad in Ely, then we buy it in Ely. But we go to doctors in Ely and the hospitals in Ely. They got a health clinic over here. But they they still don't have no doctor yet. But right now they're um, they're adding on to the building. Did you see that part on the other, on the north side? The health department they're adding on. So it's going to be a big clinic. So they're gonna what they're gonna do in there, I guess, is some uh, exercise for the guys, you know. So after that's finished, we'll probably get a doctor. Right right now we don't have a doctor. When I was growing up, shears. Shears was that was our our hospital. That's where we used to get all our help. If we uh, if we need a like our tonsils removed or anything like that, they'll they'll take us over to Shears. Then we get all that taken care of. Dental dental over there, all that stuff. So we I remember that we used to go there. Then. Uh, then Elko got part of us. We we go up to the new clinic up there too. 
Is it no clinic, the name of it? That's where we go. Some of them go there. Then we used to go, I even remember, we used to go up to Wahi too. They'll take a load of us and take us up there. Then we spend a night up there at, uh, where is it, uh, that one little motel they used to have up the canyon. We we'll stay there overnight and then go up to the hospital the next day. Then we'll have our dental work up there too. If we need help, you know, um, uh, like an Indian doctor, well, Willie Blacker was the only one that was, he was, a, he was the best one we used to have, but he's gone. And then before that, then we had another guy, his name was some kind of boot creek that used to do those things, and he's gone. So now only one that kind of comes around and help us out a little bit all the time is Gani, Gani Gomez, or what is it? Gomez, is it Gomez? Gani? Mendez. Mendez. He's the one that kind of we, we go help for, from him if we need help. He helped me a couple of times. He sings to you. He sings all that time. Then he'll have a break. Then he'll sing again. Then at the third time, I think it's the third time, he stops, then he'll tell you uh, what's what's bothering you, or you know wh what's uh, what's happening to you, who's bothering you, and where did you get that sickness? And he'll tell you that, and then uh, then he'll sing again, and then that's it. That was interesting though to listen to, because I I I was a little older, little, little older when I used to remember it being him doing those things. But he'll tell you what's, who's bothering you, where'd you get that sickness. Mostly it's from a hand game and stuff like that. That's where I mostly get it. No, I don't play hand game. I, would just, I usually just watch. I just stand and watch them or I'll sit with somebody chatting like, uh, like some ladies I know from Battle Mountain. They play hand game or go shoot, they play hand game. So I just sit there and, you know, visiting them. So I don't, I don't do that no more. After he told me not to, don't be too close to the man game players no more. He said somebody in there don't like you. So back when uh, Wooly Black Eye doctored people, did he charge people or was it just... Uh... Fifteen dollars. He used to be fifteen dollars. Now it's just donation. Like Gani, I think he's just a donation. If you want to give him something, like um, Gani, I always ask for a, a bag of smoke, whatever it is. Like a, used to be blue derm, I don't know what it is now. He'll just, you'll just donate that to him. Because he'll use it in his, um, in his um, uh, sweat. In a sweat, you know, they have that sweat building. They use that smoke in there to get their rock really hot and they sprinkle that s smoke on it. Because that's where I go. I go in that sweat. They usually have one, uh, I think that, well, if they wanted to have one, if somebody wanted one, and then they'll have one. But they usually have one before... Uh, their sun dance, you know, when they have sun dance up in the mountains, then they'll have one here on the reservation. Then they, somebody from Wahi, I'm not Wahi, Alco comes down, helps Jeff and them. Then they usually let me know, so me and Teresa go down there and get in there. We make it through. Just that one time I didn't make it through, it got too hot in there. Well, they said, nah. They have sweat and, you know, they, um, he'll just tell you, you know, what it's about and, you know, what do you believe in and then he'll sing a song and then, uh, then he'd do a little prayer, a prayer, uh, a prayer in there and then, uh, then they, uh, they got some singers in there, uh, like Janie and uh, Shasta and I don't know some of these guys. They they'll they'll sing a song. They're what is that called? Uh, 
sweat song, the sweat or something. They sing that. And uh, then uh, they'll have a maybe half hour opening in there. You, uh, if you want to if you want to bless your family, then you say, you you know, you, you, in, well, they're singing, well, they're singing, you, you know, they you bless their, you bless your family. Like I always, you know, bless my family, even, you know, some are probably sick or some, I usually tell them, you know, we're thinking about them and we bless them and stuff like that. We'll do that and then, it's neat. Then he'll sing again, and then they all, all the ones that's working in that sweat building, like they are, like they're gonna be a, uh, like uh, Jeff, he's trying to be helping along uh, uh, Ghani. And then we used to have another guy that was, uh, that was trying to be doing that too, but. He got in a car accident, so we don't have him there now. So there's just a few of them that, that sings their song and stuff like that. And then a couple of them from uh, Elko comes down. Some kind of Collins, I can't remember him. They come down. That's all they do in that. They just bless each other. Or you want to bless somebody, you bless somebody in there. They have classes at the school. I think my my um, my little uh, granddaughter always tell me that. See our villa there today. She teaches this and that, and she'll tell us what they learn and they uh, sing a song to when the when a Christmas program comes. They'll have a Kathy and uh, villa. They'll have their little kids class. You know them little kids. They're like uh, kindergartens. They'd be singing their Indian song about the animals, whatever they teach. And I think those those are those are little neat ones. The little ones they they sing songs and, and they say their little whatever. One of one little girl, she's got a little bag and she's got all kinds of animal uh, stuffed animal in there, and she'll take them out and she'll name them. What that is, she'll say just as a horse, then she'll say the Shoshone word, and it's all, she'll have maybe six of them in there. Then she'll say them along. That's the way they teach them. A lot of our youth, um, I don't think they're interesting in those things. Not the, like the little ones. The little ones are, they're more into that than the older kids. The older kids are busy with. I, I'd never see them over there. Just see them little ones there. You you ask them, are you going to go to a class? Say, so, oh, I don't know. Maybe. That's their answer. I think the little ones just really starting this year. They started from the daycare. Then now they're in that uh, preschool over there, so they're over there in the afternoons. So I think the little one is... Uh, They'll, they'll uh, speak more uh, Indian language than the other, the older groups. I don't think the older groups will. The teenagers. Oh, they're busy, they're going to go to movie or, you know, they, they're working. I don't know where they're working, but when they get their jobs and stuff like that, then, then the people there, the, who is their supervisor, will tell them to do things and that, and then they holler at them. And, and I don't know about these teenagers. The only thing I do a lot is I make blank quilts, embroidering, uh, dish towels, and my uh, pillow slips. Those things I do a lot. I tried beadwork. But my eyes are not good. I can't see good. So I can't do that. And the willow, the willowing, and the, I don't know, my hand's not, um, I, I can't do it. The same with uh, crocheting. My hand gets really stiff. I can't crochet. Like I said, that's the only thing I do is embroidering. I do a lot of embroidering. I, I quilt, yeah, I, I do a lot of quilt. And 
I used to make a um, lot of baby quilts. All those kids from way back had my quilt. I make a little homemade quilt for them. But the Lanjang ones nowadays, I think my quilt, my, my baby quilting is going down a little bit, I think. <laughs> a lot of these kids don't have my quilt now. <laughs> for additional information, or to refer an elder of the Great Basin who may be interested in contributing an oral story for preservation, contact Norm Kavanaugh, director of GBIA. Great Basin Indian Archives, brought to you by Great Basin College and sponsored by Barrick Gold North America.